Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about prednisone and my experience on prednisone. That is the steroid I've been taking for the last year. I am still on prednisone and I had originally wanted to make this video after completing prednisone, but it seems to never happen. So let's hope that this puts out good juju that I'll be done with prednisone soon. <laughs> I am making this video to hopefully help anyone else who is on steroids and needs someone to relate to or about to go on steroids or knows someone on steroids. I'm hoping this can be helpful information and this is just my personal experience. So let's get started. When someone is on steroids, it's usually because, or so I've heard since being on prednisone, it's because your health is struggling. And for me, that was definitely the case. I started steroids in August of 2021 when I had a bad reaction to cancer treatment. The cancer treatment that I had a bad reaction to was immunotherapy. And as far as I understand, the immunotherapy was supposed to train my immune system in killing cancer. It was supposed to teach it how to kill the cancer or block it from continuing to grow. And instead of doing that, the immunotherapy taught my body how to attack itself. <laughs> so my body was, instead of ta attacking the cancer, it was attacking me. So that wasn't good. And they put me on a really high dose of steroids to try and combat the immunotherapy, which it worked. So I am grateful for my steroids even though I don't want to be on them anymore. <laughs> I appreciate what they've done, but let's move on. Uh, that's kind of my mindset. The original duration of time they wanted me to be on prednisone was three months. They didn't want me on any longer because the long-term side effects can be pretty intense for your body and your health, and they don't want to risk making things worse for me down the line. One of the things that steroid use can cause is a lung infection and so I take Bactrim every week to try to prevent my lungs from getting an infection. I'm actually waiting on a, bron a bronchoscopy results because I'm, we're looking for infection in my lungs. I'm having some trouble with my lungs so we want to see if there's an infection there. So we'll see with that. If they were worried about me getting a lung infection for three month duration, I'm thinking the one year duration, there could definitely be a lung infection. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know much about the lung infections. They're testing for all kinds of bacteria, all kinds of infections. I know that one of the infections that I'm able to get and could possibly have is an infection that stays for 30 years or more. And though I don't want that, a silver lining in it is if I have a lung infection for 30 plus years, then that means I'm alive for, for 30 plus years. So I'll take it, you know? Um, I'm just kidding, but you know, I'll take it. Um, there's taboo with that. Sometimes people will say to cancer patients, it's better than the alternative. And sure, it's better than the alternative, but just because we're alive when we could not be, doesn't mean that we aren't allowed to get annoyed of these things that we go through. You know, we're, just, we're only human, so. I have been tapering since I started. So every week I would taper by five milligrams. And once I got to where I was almost off of the steroids it, last November, I started having my immunotherapy reaction come back. So I had to up my dose a lot and then instantly start tapering again and when I upped my dose it helped my reaction just to go away again but then I had to start tapering again when I was tapering I started having more severe shortness of breath I always have shortness of breath with my lung cancer but it was getting worse and I was having more pain and what we didn't know was my cancer was actually spreading at that time and it was then, there was more cancer in my lung, in the lining of my lung, in the fluid in my lung, more lymph nodes, and my brain. So, I'm sure that stuff played a part in it. But, I remember specifically at the end of January, I was trying to taper, and I got to a really low dose. And, it was Ellis's birthday, and I thought, I'm gonna 
pass out. So you get really bad fatigue when you're tapering off of steroids. And I thought I'm gonna pass out at his birthday dinner. I hope he won't be upset at me. And I didn't pass out, I made it through, but it, it was that intense of fatigue where it feels like out of your control, you're just gonna pass out. It's really weird. So fatigue is one of the side effects of steroids in the sense of tapering. I've had a lot of people ask me if I get extra energy because I'm on steroids. And the answer for me is no. So I think maybe if I was a normal healthy body being put on steroids, maybe it would do that for me, I'm not sure. But in my case, my body was so weak. I, When I was hospitalized, it's I struggled to walk. I had like no strength. So it's just kind of canceling out the weakness and struggles my body's having to where it's not giving me anything extra, if that makes sense. I do take another steroid, dexamethasone, on chemo day and the day after chemo day in the hospital and at home. And that gives me an energy boost on chemo day and the day after. Like, it'll keep me up at night and that's okay. Um, we try to taper some of that with my chemo regimen switching but then I broke out in a chemo rash on my chest so we had to up that again so now my tapering schedule is instead of doing five milligrams every week like I have done this whole time they want me to taper at either a two and a half milligram dose or a one milligram dose it looks like they're leaning towards one milligram at a time which is unfortunate it makes it way longer I've been told you have to taper very slowly, that tapering off of prednisone can be fatal if it is not done correctly. So that's another thing I've struggled with is added anxiety. I struggle with anxiety in general and when they, when they said it could be fatal if not done correctly, it gives me such bad anxiety about taking my medicine. So every day when I take it, I if I'm alone, I'll take a picture of it on my tongue so I can show my husband that I took it. And if I'm with him, I have him look and make sure I'm taking it so that I believe that I took it. <laughs> and then I have one of those pill separators so I can confirm that I took it that day. But it, it it's triggering to my anxiety. Something some other people experience with prednisone is rage so people call it roid rage and luckily I haven't had much of that I would say I've probably experienced it two or three times thankfully and it's where you can well at least in my case I could sense that it wasn't normal like it seemed like something out of the ordinary and I recognized that I was feeling really angry for no good reason everything was making me irritable and so I tried to be alone for some of it if I could so I didn't snap at anyone or make anyone feel bad I told my family so I said Kyle kids this medicine is making me feel angry today I'm not sure why no good reason so just beware <laughs> and everyone was extra nice and helped me get through it so you know if you are having roid rage maybe let the people around you know that it's out of your control and that you're aware of it and trying to not let it happen, but that, it, you know, again, it's out of your control. Another side effect from steroids that I have experienced is facial hair. Woo, isn't that fun? Now, I don't get it as much now. I do still get it, but it was more so in the beginning when my dose was, dose was higher. And when I came home from the hospital, I had like whiskers, here and here and it's not like just darker peach fuzz on your face it's like thick whiskers and I joked that I was Joey Fatone from the from NSYNC <laughs> gotta love Joey Fatone um and so I was really self-conscious of it I I'm having all these changes from cancer treatment as it is and it was discouraging that I now was gonna have to shave my face and I didn't want to feel like a man. It's weird. I don't normally go into these gender stereotypes or like roles, but it made me feel less feminine and I didn't want to have to shave like, like my husband did. And so I was researching stuff and I found these cool little tools 
um, I don't know what they're called. I'll, I'll look for them online and put a link in the description box. This brand is Chic, and it's like a little razor, and you just hold it against your face kind of flat, and then just drag up and down, and it gets like the peach fuzz and the whiskers, and it you do it dry. You don't use water or soap. It's really easy, but... It, Finding these made me feel so much better about the facial hair because I had like a cute little feminine tool to get rid of it And I've even seen like Hillary Duff use this on Instagram And so it made me feel better about it mentally and it makes a big difference Make you, if you are aware of what makes you feel better mentally and Take care of it. Don't just ignore it um, So I would make it like a little spa treatment I would do that, this little tool, the little shaver, and then I would do like a face mask and it would make me feel good about myself. I was doing self-care, pampering myself a little bit, and it really made a big difference. I was less worried about the facial hair after getting a, a feminine tool, even though that shouldn't matter. It made me feel better. Another side effect that I've had that can be argued to be something else is I've had jaw issues. So I would love to know if anyone else has had jaw issues while on prednisone or steroids. I'm so genuinely curious. So it's either that these jaws, jaw issues that I've been having are either from the immunotherapy reaction or from the steroids. We can't figure it out because they both pretty much started at the same time and I'm still experiencing both. So it could be either one. We don't know. Every time I taper my steroids I notice a reaction in my jaw and every time I have to go up in my dose I notice a reaction in my jaw so I don't know if it's the steroids or if it's the immunotherapy I don't know but what happens is my jaw locks so from last August till probably April my jaw was locking at this point and I couldn't open it any more than that. So I'd have to squish food in, <laughs> in my mouth and brushing and flossing was hard and I couldn't ever open it. It was locked, like permanently wouldn't open past that. And then every once in a while when I would be eating, if I'd get like a side chew going on, it would pop my jaw open and I could open it all the way. And the sideways chewing would like cause my jaw to like pop open and when it pops it kind of hurts but it's also satisfying because I'm able to open my mouth finally so now I, it's still bothering me but lesser much lesser it will still lock to where I can't open it all the way but it's more so open and then it clicks a lot it clicks in and out of place and I spoke with a TMJ specialist and he said in his opinion he thought it was my body having this terrible reaction to immunotherapy and tensing everything up locking my jaw to where it was stuck so he thought it was that but I also read online that there's like a point zero zero one four percentage I could be wrong on that one of people who get locked off from prednisone and it's rare and it's typically in women but my immunotherapy reaction was rare I was told I was in the 2% or less of people have this reaction so I could definitely see it being that I have a rare steroid side effect because apparently my body reacts differently than other people's <laughs> But I read that some people do get this lockjaw with steroids. So I would love to know if anyone else gets it because I can't figure out if it's immunotherapy or the steroids. It's gotten better over time, but I would say I had a good eight months where it was like permanently, or I could only open it like this, which was really annoying. And it hurts. It's like it, and it, it contributes to the claustrophobic feeling when you can't open it, it feels like it's stuck. It is stuck. It's a very yucky feeling. I don't like it. The last side effect that I wanted to talk about was weight gain. Now, when I started steroids, my team warned me of weight gain, excess weight gain. They stressed it a lot, and I genuinely thought I wouldn't have 
bad weight gain just like a little bit maybe because I've always been someone who eats healthy. I, I eat a well-balanced diet and I have for a while and I'm a naturally thin person. I don't gain weight. Like I've always been able to eat what I want and not gain weight. So I thought like, eh, that's for most people, but not me. I probably won't have weight gain, but I have had a lot of weight gain. A significant amount of weight gain and more than I've ever had in my life. I have gained over 60 pounds since I was released from the hospital and I'm about I'm over 50 pounds up from my normal weight so when I left the hospital I was a little underweight because I was on a liquid diet and a puree diet. I couldn't even drink water when I was first admitted so this this protein drink I'll try to link it below, saved me. It got a lot of nutrients into me and it was created by someone involved with cancer. I don't know if it was someone who had cancer themselves or a family member did, but it covers a lot of the nutrients you need as a cancer patient. And so this really helped me. I'll try to find a link for that. And then this is another protein powder that I love. This is the best tasting one I've found. and. Um, a friend actually sent it to me because she liked it so I was really grateful for her to send it to me because this is my favorite one now that um, I'll add to smoothies or you know smoothie bowls and I will link this one down below too it's kind of pricey but it covers a lot of nutrients that you need so it's good when I was told I would get weight gain I thought it was a good thing because I was dropping weight in the hospital while on a high steroid dose and I would rather have a little extra weight on me than less weight because if I go into another treatment like radiation where it burned my esophagus and I struggled with eating, I was on a liquid diet then too, I would rather have a little extra weight and room to lose than to be underweight when I start and lose more weight. So I saw the weight gain as a good thing. But now I feel like it's just kind of annoying. I'm, you know, I've gained over 60 pounds and it's still going up. Every time I go to the doctors, it's up a little. And it's just so bizarre to me. I have never experienced this. Even when I was pregnant with my kids, I think I gained maybe 20 pounds for each of them and then lost it afterwards. Um, I think I'm beautiful still and attractive. My husband makes me feel beautiful and attractive still. I've always seen beauty in all shapes and sizes, truly. I'm not just saying that. I personally find people attractive with some curves. I, I think it's beautiful, all the different body types. And so I'm not mad at the way I look. I don't like the stretch marks as much because they're a reminder of what my body is going through. Sometimes they're a little jarring when I see them just because they're so dark against my pale skin, which I'm sure they'll fade over time, but it's just weird seeing them because I'm not used to it. And I didn't even get stretch marks when I was pregnant with my kids. So it's just foreign to me. I have the stretch marks on my thighs, on my shins, on my sides, my love handles, my rear end all over it. It's just, um, I have it on my arms. It's just so weird. I'm not used to it. Um, but the reason I don't like the weight gain is because I have to keep buying new clothes. And I'm not the type of person who likes to spend a lot of money on clothes for myself. For my kids, yes. <laughs> I love dressing them up. But for myself, I'm like, eh, I don't need to get anything. I'm fine. And I've had to change sizes so many times since this weight gain has happened. And... I'll buy things a little oversized so I won't have to keep buying new stuff but then I grow out of the oversized stuff so I started this I think when I left the hospital I was smaller than a size 4 because my size 4 jeans were really saggy on me but my normal weight I was a size 4 before the reaction and in, in pan size and now I have size 10 pants but those don't fit anymore. My cousin was sweet enough to remind me of doing the little hair tie trick where you loop a hair tie through the buttonhole and then hook it onto the button. That's helped me to get some more use out of the size 10 <laughs> bottoms. But I must be like a 12 or bigger because these won't 
fit they won't buckle at all anymore but I don't want to buy more because if I'm supposed to be tapering I would rather just taper and stop gaining but I think I have to buy new pants for the fall we'll see <laughs> I'm just avoiding it that's where dresses have been really nice they are roomy and flowy and they give me they're comfortable um, weight gain in too small of clothes makes life uncomfortable so I like love sweats flowy dresses little sh cozy shorts for at home because too tight of clothes is not fun I've had to pack away so many clothing items that don't fit me anymore but I'm saving them because hope I'm hoping to get back to my normal size again I'm still a little scratchy from my bronchoscopy that I just had. I've even had to buy underwear multiple times because I'm growing. It's just so bizarre and annoying. It's just mainly annoying. I know it's kind of weird showing my stretch marks like this and my kind of featuring my weight gain, but I want to show that it's normal what I'm going through. I know other people might have different experiences but in my experience on steroids I have had a lot of weight gain and it's okay and I'm still me it has affected my identity a little bit I've worked with two therapists since being diagnosed with cancer and both of them would stress my identity and I always thought it was weird because I didn't really get where they were going with it but I see now what they were going for like cancer seems to steal a lot of a person's identity and when I was diagnosed it was like I instantly lost control over what was going on in my body and it's a sad scary feeling and I've always been a naturally thin person so sometimes I don't recognize myself with the weight gain I have the moon face oh yeah moon face how have I not talked about moon face and my side effects of prednisone. It causes moon face and I have it. A lot of people say, no, you don't look like you have it. You know, you look beautiful, which thank you. That's really sweet. But I do have it and it's okay. I just have a puffy face. I'll show you guys my face before. Um, and it's okay. It's just, I don't recognize myself. I, I don't feel like me. I've always been naturally thin. And so it's weird to not be now. <laughs> and it's out of my control I still eat the same way I always have probably healthier and because of cancer and I I'm just gaining weight a way to save money while if you're going through this I know a lot of cancer medications can cause weight gain I've seen a lot of people post about it so if you're also going through weight gain from a medication causing it or from cancer treatment something I found helpful in saving money for buying new clothes all the time new sizes so if you keep going up like me <laughs> I go to thrift stores thrift stores have great options I've always loved thrift stores I think it's so fun I think there's hidden treasures in thrift stores so I don't look at it as like a bad thing to have to shop at a thrift store I love thrift, st thrift stores so you could get really inexpensive clothing at thrift stores or um, I go to the clearance aisles, so I shop at Old Navy, and they have great a great clearance section that's usually packed with clothes. Target, I go there for clearance. They usually have a good amount of clearance stuff. And then there's that website that I've been seeing advertised all over Facebook and Instagram. It's like Shen, Shen, and I bought some dresses from them because I just can't afford to buy nice quality expensive pieces I need I'm changing out of my size so often that I just need affordable clothing so if you're also in this situation look at clearance thrift stores and I found Shen Shen has great deals and cute it is cute <laughs> my weight gain has also made it harder to find my port so I have a port there's my rash from trying to taper some of the steroids I have a port here and when I had it put in it would bulge out of my chest where you could see it all the time and now that I've had 60 plus pounds of weight gain since then 
it tucks away and you can barely find it. So the nurses have a little bit of trouble when they have to put the needle in. So that's a little annoying. It's like a an ordeal where I, where I have to try to pop it out. It was it was more convenient when it was bulgy. So that's a little downside to the weight gain as well. But not a big deal. If you guys are interested in seeing more of my everyday life, you can follow me on Instagram. My I will link my Instagram below, but it's Jenny Appleford. Or I'm on Facebook. My cousins and sister created a page called Our Brave Jenny that you can follow. They create it as like a place for everyone to join in. So strangers join in, co-workers of family members, just everyone joins in to show support and love. So if you guys wanna follow more of my daily life, I'm more so on Instagram, but you can also go on my Facebook. So I'll link those below. If you watched this whole video, thank you for being a part of it. I was very vulnerable in showing my body this way. You know, filming my body is weird in general, but then to film it with the stretch marks and the weight gain that I'm not used to, you know, I was a little nervous. So thank you for loving me and supporting me and doing this. Um, I really appreciate everyone accepting me for who I am. It means a lot. Hopefully I covered everything I meant to cover. We'll see. And if I didn't, if you have a question, feel free to ask in the comments. I'd be happy to answer. And let me know your experiences with prednisone, if you've been on it, or steroids, long-term steroid use, if you've had to do it for a year or more. I'm hoping to be off of it soon, hoping and praying, just because I wanna start feeling like myself again. But I am really, really grateful for all that prednisone has done for me. It saved my life, you know, my immunotherapy reaction was causing my body to attack itself and it saved me. And so I'm really grateful for prednisone. I just want to get off of it. I want to be done. I have reached one time where I was completely off of it. I think it was about a week and I started having adverse side effects to where my team thought I was having a pulmonary embolism, so they had me up that a lot again, and I just can't seem to get off of it. So I'm hoping and praying to be off of it soon. I'll let you guys know, I'll keep you in the loop. And remember, all bodies are beautiful, and you never know what someone's going through, so be kind. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate all of your love and support. I try to go through the comments as much as I can and people you all really make me feel supported stronger you guys boost up my confidence in myself and this battle and I'm really grateful a lot of you share your own experiences or family members experiences and it really truly helps me so much this filming and Tra um, documenting my journey. I find it very therapeutic. I'm leaving videos for my children to look back on and see what I went through, whether I'm here or not at the time of them watching these. I think it would be interesting for them to be able to go back and see everything because they're so young. And I'm hoping to help other people going through this situation as well as myself. And I appreciate you guys all helping me because you truly do help me. I have a lot of people who have been on this journey with me now for months because of these YouTube videos. And I recognize you guys in the comments and I feel connected to you guys. I feel like we're friends. I feel almost like we're family, some of you. And um, it's a really nice feeling because the more support, the better during this journey. You know, I have my shirt stronger than cancer from my cousin Tracy and maybe her sisters I think it was from all three of them Tracy Trish and Stacy and I love these shirts you know they're a little tight to where I don't feel comfortable wearing them out in public anymore because I'm afraid I'll get pregnancy comments but they're great for at home that's where I have, feel like I have to do oversized because 
I don't want someone saying, oh, another one on the way or something like that, which I get if they think it, it looks like it. But so thank you for being here. Thank you for the prayers, love and support. Bye. Thanks for watching.